There you go. Okay, so this track is uh, it's called Wishing when it starts. Is it on? Yeah, yeah this was a track. Um, we recorded this in uh, Compass Point. Um, I think it was coming to the end of our first huge tour of America and we needed a new single. And this was a song that I had written when I lived in Liverpool in a little bed sit kind of and I had the the riff so I I did a little demo and I took it to Mike Howlett who was our producer and uh, he was actually going out that night and he set up but I've got a little studio in my back room here he said so why don't you do a little recording and mess about and by the time he got in at I don't know maybe one in the morning I had the whole demo done so he and I kind of mixed it up and then it got forgotten for maybe a year and uh, when we'd finished our first big American tour and needed a new single Clive from the record company said well what about that song that you played me last year and uh, I was like wow yeah okay we'll do that so we went to Compass Point which was a really famous studio and um, basically we put it together there and the Thompson Twins were in the next studio doing uh, something from one of their albums. And uh, I think because it was our first holiday for like a year of being on the road, I think it, it's, the song has a lightness because of that. Like, a, a, you know, thank God we're on a holiday kind of thing. And um, I wrote this song itself about uh, just before we went on tour, I was, I met a girl and I was like, give me a photograph with your number on it so when I get back in two weeks, which turned into a year, I'll give you a call. So she's like, no, no, you're going to go to America, forget it. So when I actually got to writing the lyrics in Compass Point, I went, oh, yeah, remember, I wish I had that photograph, you know? And uh, it, for some reason, it all just kind of came together. And uh, I was given... Uh, license really to play since any way I wanted because we'd had hits now and it was like oh it's it's your ball now so I just started playing all kinds of riffs and stuff on it and that's why it's got like I don't know like a four minute instrumental outro because uh, I'd listened to it so many times without lyrics and so to me it was more of an instrumental that had lyrics put on it and uh, uh, I just loved the sound of the synths going on and on and on at the end. Um, didn't expect it to be a hit like it was, but it was, and that was great. Um, just hearing it now like this actually brings a lot of memories back at Compass Point, which I don't think exists anymore. Um, it was a really beautiful studio and we had a great time for a week in Compass Point. And listening to the drums and stuff now, we we didn't want just a normal drum sound. We wanted to get really into electronic drums and stuff, which didn't really exist at the time. So we started sticking snare drums through flangers and then through another flanger and stuff like that. And I remember nobody really understood what we wanted but in the end we got there and we're like yeah well, that sounds great now um, and there was also uh, this guitar part at the end was done on a thing called an ebo which we'd never heard of before so once paul started to play about with it it became the folk focal part of the end because it was such a powerful sound It was, uh, it was a lot of fun to record it. And they had a, a picture of somebody, a girl and a guy running away from a flying saucer. So we tried to grab it off them to use as an album cover. We're gonna, this is gonna be our cover. And that eventually inspired the, the spacey lyrics of Iran.
I uh, went to London, Shrewsbury Avenue, got this cheap guitar called a Shergold Modulator. Um, still got it actually, and um, got it home, sat down in my mum, I was living with my mum and dad, in my mum and dad's room, opened the case, picked it up, and the very, very first notes I played were the doo-doo-doo-doo. <laughs> 